And I'm Mr. Richards here. Today's grade seven, unit four, lesson 13, practice problems review is on measurement error. And our first question deals exactly with that. The depth of a lake is 15 and 8 tenths meters. Jada accurately measured the depth of the lake to the nearest meter. What measurement did Jada get? Well, to the nearest meter, this is going to be 16 meters. By how many meters does the measured depth differ from the actual depth? Well, if we take 16 and subtract 15 and 8 tenths, we're going to end up with 2 tenths of a meter. Express the measurement error as a percentage of the actual depth. All right. So for measurement error, we're going to take the amount of error and divide it by the actual amount. And so our amount of error was 2 tenths of a meter. The depth of the lake is actually 15 and 8 tenths meters. And when we take 2 tenths and divide it by 15 and 8 tenths, we're going to end up with a fun decimal here. You know, 0 0.0126. And in honor of some of my students in my class, I'm going to write this all the numbers out in my calculator. 5, 8, two, two, eight. And again, you do not have to take that all the way out. To get this into a percentage, I'm going to multiply by 100 or move that decimal two spots to the left. And we end, I'm sorry, two spots to the right, hello. One, and we'll call it 20, we'll round to seven hundredths of a percent. And so one and 27 hundredths percent is our Measurement error in question one. What about question two? A watermelon weighs 8,475 grams. A scale measured the weight with an error of 12% under the actual weight. What was the measured weight? Well, if we take our 8,475 and multiply it by that 12%. We'll figure out how much error there actually was. There was an error of 1,017 grams. And so it was under the actual weight. So if I take 8,000, 475 and subtract the 1017, we end up with 7,458 grams that it measured. Another way to solve this question is to say, all right, 8,475 grams, I was 12% under. And so 100 minus 12 is 88%. And so if I multiply this number, 8,475, by that 88% in decimal form, I will also get 7,458 grams. And that's the beauty of math. There's many times more than one way to solve the question correctly. Question three. Noah's oven temperature gives a reading that is 2% greater than the actual temperature. If the actual temperature is 325 degrees, what will the temperature or the thermometer reading be? Well, once again, two ways to solve this. You could take 325 and multiply it by that 2% to figure out how much greater is this reading. When you do that, you get six and a half degrees. And so you could add 325 to that six and a half degrees warmer that it is and get 331 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And like in our previous problem, if we're 2% greater, 
that means we're looking at 102% of the actual temperature here. So I could take 325 and multiply by 1 and 2 hundredths, and that too will get me 331 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if the thermometer reading is 76 degrees, what is the actual temperature? Let's use that blue method above. If we think about that and break down what happened here, we took the actual temperature, the 325 above there, we multiplied it by the 102%, and we found what it measured. That's what we did up there in blue. Can we use that to help us in B? We're looking still for the actual. We're going to multiply that actual by 102%, and that's going to equal our measured. Now, it's measured at 76 degrees. And so, if I were to divide by 1 and 2 hundredths here, 76 divided by the 1 and 2 hundredths will give us an actual temperature of about 74 and a half degrees. And that is our solution, about 74 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Let's continue on to question four. At the beginning of the month, there were 80 ounces of peanut butter in the pantry. Now there is one third less than that. How many ounces of peanut butter are in the pantry now? This is review from Unit 4, Lesson 4. Well, one-third less than that. Hmm. I visualize this as just a tape diagram. And this was my 80 ounces. We have one-third less than the 80. So that means I have two-thirds of the 80 left. And that's what we have here in A, two-thirds of the 80. Not one-third of the 80, not 80 minus one-third, not one and a third times 80, but simply two-thirds times the 80. In problem five, which is review from unit three, lesson seven, fill in the table for the side length and area of different squares. Well, if we have a side length of three, for squares we can take a three and multiply it by three to get nine. 100 times 100 is 10,000. 25 times 25 is 625. And S times S is S squared. And lastly in this lesson, is the relationship between the side length of a square and the area of a square proportional? Well, if we take 3 and divide it by 9, we get 1 third. So when I take 100 and divide it by 10,000, I would need that to be 1 third for it to be uh, proportional. It's not 1 third, it's 1 one hundredth. And so no, it's not proportional. And that is it for this grade seven, unit four, lesson 13 practice problems review on measurement error. Good luck.